The wrap widget wraps its children to the next line when it runs out of room. You can think about wrap as one of the two ways to deal with overflow. That is when the widgets don't have enough room because it's bigger than the screen width. And those two ways of dealing with overflow are scrolling or wrapping. So let me show you this. So before we get to wrap, let me just dump in a row right here with some containers inside. I'm gonna duplicate these, Command D two times, and I've got some widget styling set up, so I'm just gonna add these in here. Okay, great. So if you have more content, more widgets than fit on the screen like this, you have two options. You could use a row and set it to scroll. And so you can just scroll to access that content or you could use wrap. So let's replace our row using command G with a wrap widget. And the child widgets will just be bumped down to the next line. So if you want all the children to be visible, use wrap. If you're good with scrolling, use row. Okay, so let's jump in and look at the properties of wrap. The first two properties are spacing properties. And this first spacing property is the spacing along the main axis. Well, what's the main axis? Well, that's this direction right here. So by default, it comes in as horizontal. That is the child widgets will be populated from left to right horizontally. And so the main axis is horizontal. And so if I put 20 pixels in here, you can see that I've got 20 pixels of space added there. And then you've got your spacing in your cross axis, which is vertical. So if we add 20 pixels in there, you can see it bumps it down. Now, of course, these would be switched if you switch your main axis and your direction right here. So let's make this obvious. So we put 50 pixels in here. And when we change this to vertical, now, of course, we can't see our run spacing, our cross axis spacing, because the next row or really the next column would have to fill up this vertical space right here. So what we can do is we can just take our bars right here, make it very small. So then when we start duplicating these items, it pops it to the next row. So when we go back in here, we can see our run spacing right here. So if we make it 90, you can see that it's the spacing between here. That's our cross axis horizontal because our main axis is vertical. OK, let's go back to what we had before. And here we can see the difference between horizontal and vertical main axis. So if we just keep duplicating these, we've got two different columns. OK, great. Let's go back to how we had it before. All right. Next up, we've got alignment. And this is our main axis alignment. So if our main axis is horizontal, left to right, then our alignment is referencing that. So the start would be on the left, the center would be in the center, and the end would be on the end over here. So if we did center, you can see a slight difference, but not very much. And that's because our wrap widget wants to be the same size as its children. So it's a bit hard to visualize this. So in order to change the size of our wrap widget, because it doesn't have any size properties, we would have to pass down a constraint from the parent. And if that doesn't make any sense, go check out our video on the main layout rule to learn in Flutterflow. And we've linked that below. But in short, we want to wrap our wrap in another widget that forces our widget to be bigger. And there are multiple ways we could do this. So we could wrap this in a column. So let's do this. Let's wrap it in a column and set our cross axis alignment to stretch. So it's stretching our wrap out across the whole screen. Or we could wrap it in a column. So let's replace this with command G or we could wrap it in a column. So let's undo that and then command B wrap it in a container and set the width to infinity. And let's just pull the height out a little bit. Okay, great. Let's go back to our wrap right here because now we can visualize these things better and we can already see our alignment better because all of our child widgets are centered within our wrap widget. And of course, we've got all the other options, which makes sense. Let's set that back to center for now. Next, we've got our run alignment or our cross axis alignment. And if our main axis alignment is horizontal left to right, then our cross axis is vertical. So what we're saying for this alignment is we wanna say, hey, we wanna align it to the start, which is up at the top. And so if we wanted to change that, we could change it to center. And so now we're centering the child widgets, both in its main axis, horizontal and vertical. Next, 
We've got a property that might be a little bit confusing because it's called cross axis alignment. Then it might be even more confusing when you set one of these properties and nothing changes. And the reason nothing changes is because all of our children are vertically the same size. Because what this cross axis alignment is doing is saying in each one of the rows, how to vertically, that's the cross axis alignment, how to vertically align these widgets. So if you think about this whole wrap as one big row that you can vertically align, you can go one level down and think about this individual row in the same way where you can align things in that row. So we would have to change the height of one of these containers. And so now you can see that we've got our cross axis alignment within this row set to center. But if we change it to start, it jumps up to there and and down there. Now, this is a less common property that you're not gonna use as often, but it's helpful to know that it's there for the edge cases that you do need it. Awesome. Let's go back and two more properties. Next, we got our vertical direction. And this is telling your wrap widget what order the child widget should be laid out in. So here it's set to down. So it starts adding the widgets from the top down, but if you reverse it, it'll load them from the bottom up. Now, this is more applicable when you're using the wrap widget to dynamically generate children from like an API call or a call to your backend. When you have hard coded children in right here, you can just move them around manually. So this is not really applicable. Okay. And lastly, we have our clip behavior. And so now it's set to no clip, but if we take our container here and we make it smaller than the children like that you can see that it's not clipping but if we set it to clip content it will clip the content and of course remember this is happening because our container is forcing our wrap to be the same size as the container so resizing that container is also resizing our wrap and that's why the clip content works when i resize the container lastly common use cases so wrap is commonly used for when you have a collection of buttons or chips, especially when they're dynamically generated. But one caveat to keep in mind is that we do have choice chip widgets. So if you need choice chips, try that out first. And if you have more fine grain control you need over layout, styling, sorting, or filtering options, then go for your wrap widget. The other main usage for the wrap widget is for responsiveness. And that's because the children dynamically wrap to the next line. So no matter how large the screen is, you're always gonna see the content. And that's the wrap widget in Flutterflow.